Hello guys, welcome to my channel and I am Rathin Datta. Today we will be discussing the balancing of several masses in different plane. In this case of balancing, suppose there are four unbalanced masses, mass M1 at plane A and mass M2 at plane B and mass M3 at plane C and the mass M4 at plane D. These four masses will be balanced by another two masses which we will be calling as balancing mass the mass ml at the plane l and the mass mm at the place at the plane m so all these masses the, including the balancing masses are at different planes so using these two balancing masses we will be balancing the resultant out the resultant force resultant unbalanced force in the system okay for this we will be uh, drawing a table where there will be uh, there will be a force polygon column and there will be a couple polygon column and using the couple polygon column we will be drawing a couple polygon from which uh, one, of, one of the masses balancing masses we will have what magnitude and position of one of the balancing masses and using the force polygon column in the table we will be having the magnitude and position of the another balancing masses so the masses ml and mm both of the uh, balancing masses their magnitude and position that we have to find out okay and we will be considering the mass at the l plane the balancing mass at l plane as the reference plane okay and using this reference plane we will be finding our main target will be or the aim will be to find out the magnitude of the two balancing masses and the position of the two masses let's see hello guys uh, this is the thing i was explaining that is the balancing of mass of several mass in different planes okay as you can see your mass m1 mass m2 mass m3 and mass m4 all are the unbalanced masses okay in three in four different plane a b c and d these are their respective planes and you have introduced this mass this m1 ml mass and this mm mass in between the plane AB as the plane L, in between the plane C and D as the plane M as MM and in between the AB that is ML. Okay. We have considered this mass at L that is ML. This ML mass is our reference point. Okay. So left hand side of the left hand side distance from the uh, plane L it will be considered as a negative in length and this length the L2, L3, LM and L4 will be considered as a positive. That's why it has been given this as a positive and this has a negative. Okay. Okay. These are their respective radius of rotation R1, R2, R3, R4, RM, RL. And so this diagram is called the position of planes. Okay. Since we are showing the different planes, how they are separated from each other. Now, if we see this plane, if we see this plane from this side or see this diagram from this side now in the position of plane you are watching in this way okay in this way you are watching this way okay suppose we are trying to watch this arrangement from this side from the left hand side okay so it will quite look like this that is the configuration diagram okay in the since all the masses are different planes but from this angle from, le from this side left hand side view it will observe like they are in the same plane but they are not actually and their respective angles are taken as for the m2 theta 2 for m3 theta 3 for m4 theta 4 so we have to find out the our main aim is to find out the magnitude of ml and magnitude of mm and their position that is the what will be the theta that is the magnitude of mm magnitude of ml and theta m and theta l this four value has to be found out okay so we will be finding in the uh, finding in this derivation okay so if we see okay okay if we see actually our <clears throat> the table that way that i was talking about was this okay See, the plane A, plane B, plane C, plane D, in between this plane M and the plane between plane L. These are the respective masses. You can see that, right? And these are the respective radius of length. And this is your centrifugal force. 
acting on each masses m1 r1 m ml rl m2 r2 m3 r3 m m r m m4 r4 okay and since the respective your reference plane is your this is your reference plane okay rp reference plane so it has no distance and if the value of l is 0 your couple value will also be 0 it is just an assumption that our the mass at the l plane is our reference plane okay so you can see in the couple column in the sixth column that is you have this value 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 but in the fourth column that is a centrifugal force column there, there are one two three four five six and all of them if we want to draw a polygon using the values of m1 r1 as a single line or a single vector ml rl as a single vector and each having the single vector representation of single vector we cannot because there are two unknowns this is an unknown and this is also an unknown because mm is unknown and ml is also unknown but if we look into this 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 column okay if we look into this column our only unknown is mm because your ml expression is zero here so if we try to draw if we try to draw a polygon which we will be calling we will call as a couple polygon this will be our first step this will be our second step or the second vector third vector this will be the fourth vector and the closing side that is the fifth side will give us the magnitude and the direction of mm okay let's see how we do this okay okay so if we keep keep up this configuration in our mind so at first if we draw the couple polygon so it will be like from o to from o dash to a dash it will go like that okay it will go like that because it is representing minus m1 r1 l1 okay so keeping the direction because your theta 1 is taken in 0 degree okay but it is in reverse direction because it is in negative value okay so once you find this these two things okay once you find out these two things these two points your next thing is what your next thing is to draw the line for m2 at theta 2 is it not so keeping the uh, and your uh, and this line will be okay as per the theta 2 so it will be like this okay it will be represented by m2 r2 l2 okay and the next line that will go will be your third line okay this is your theta 1 was 0 and theta 2 was maintaining this thing okay this is your theta 2 this is your theta 2 okay so we will be following theta 3 for m3 and your line will follow this line okay and this is your m3 r3 l3 what was our fourth step to follow the degree of theta 4 for the mass m4 it is somewhat like that okay if we see this is our theta 3 okay this is our suppose m4 r4 l4 okay so if we join this these two okay if we join this suppose this is o dash a dash a dash b dash this c dash and this is d dash this was our m4 r4 l4 okay suppose we join this two your vector d dash and o dash okay your d dash and o dash so this angle will give us this angle will give us theta m okay this angle will give us theta m by drawing a horizontal line and following this dot dotted line it will give us at the point d it will give us theta m 
okay and this d dash o dash this d dash o dash okay into your scale because you have to take a scale will give us this value that is mm rm lm so if you know rm and lm your mm will be what d not o not vector into scale by rm into lm so by this diagram you, you found out your value of the magnitude of the mass mm and also the direction that is the position of your mass mm as theta m okay this is our couple polygon now following the same configuration diagram coming into our fourth column of the table using the values of centrifugal force now we can draw since we now know let me go back okay see now we know this mm this value is now a known value so keeping the steps as like earlier one this was your two this was your three this was your four this was your five right but in this case your fifth expression is now a known expression because this rm will be given in the numerical quotient this will be actually given value and from the couple polygon in the couple column you have actually found out this mm so this will become your sixth vector or sixth line or the magnitude of the sixth line for your force polygon this will be your closing line this will be your closing line ml rl so the sixth line will give you the magnitude of the uh, mass ml and the uh, and its position that is the theta l okay so going back to our diagram it will be like see following the same diagram suppose your m m1 r1 is a positive not like minus it is positive from o to a and following because your uh, this one is zero degree as you remember now going next is your theta 2 for the mass for the mass m2 m2 r2 okay m2 r2 so, okay now following now following your m3 okay for the third mass that is following the theta 3 it will be m m3 r3 it is o a let's suppose this is o this is a this is b and this is c okay and this is your m1 r1 this is your m2 r2 this is your m3 r3 okay okay so let's suppose now your uh, the, the last line will be what the last line will be following the m4 and the theta 4 it will be somewhat like that we are just following this angle that is your theta 4 angle this is your theta 4 okay this will be your m4 r4 okay are you getting my point this will be your m4 r4 let's suppose name this as o a b c this is as d now now what happens you know the direction of mm and rm okay you have found out this is the direction okay this is the direction of mm mm rm okay as you know because you know the direction from the force polygon for the mass mm so following so following a line we, we can reach at the point o this is your mm rm now if you join these two the vector eo into scale will give you what will give you nothing but m l into r l so if you know r l your m l will be what eo vector into scale by r l okay so this will give you the magnitude of m l okay this will give you the magnitude of m l and this will be 
if you draw a straight line or a horizontal line this sorry if we draw a horizontal line your this thing will be what your theta l so we have found out from this thing as theta m and mm from this thing and from this thing we have found out what we have found out ml and theta l this was our target right so by using this force polygon and couple polygon we can actually uh, get this value these four values that is the magnitude of the two balancing mass and their respective positions so thank you we'll be meeting in the next video of balancing masses now thank you thank you so much thanks for subscribing bye bye